and welcome to What a Deck, YouTube's buggiest, bu buggiest, bu buggiest Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling show. I'm your host, Hardleg Joe, and today we're playing B Trooper Beatdown, as brought to you by Patreon sponsor Cat Monarch, who wanted to see my take on the TCG's newest exclusive archetype. Which is pretty strong. I don't think it's quite competitive, but it is at least rogue viable. And it's also pretty complicated, which is why I'm not playing a super spicy build full of a bunch of jank this time. Instead, I opted for a more basic build, a B Trooper 101. If you're new to the archetype, this should help explain a lot of the basic combos and plays that it can make, and should serve as a nice template that you can take and then add your own tech cards to make it more spicy as you become more accustomed to it. And I'm going to be playing this in 10 duels against random opponents on EDO Pro, just testing this out, giving you the B Trooper experience. And if you want to skip right to that, there should be chapter codes down on the, the timeline thing. You can skip ahead to that. For everyone else who wants a little bit more context, I'm going to take a few minutes and just explain how this deck works in general. So if you're unfamiliar with the Bee Troopers, they are an insect-themed archetype with a focus on Link Summoning. They've got two Link Monsters, a Link 2 that's a very good extender, it gives you another normal summon of an insect, and this big Link 4, Giant Bee Trooper Invincible Atlas, which which gets a lot of points just for the name. This thing has 3,000 attack normally, and while it has 3,000 or less attack, it can't be targeted by or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, which gives it quite a bit of protection. It also has an additional effect that says once per turn, you can tribute one insect monster, and then do one of two things. Either gain 2,000 attack until the end of the turn, which is great for OTKs and getting over things like Dragoon, just a 5,000 beater. Or you can special summon any B Trooper from the deck, which is a pretty good extender. As for the B Trooper main deck monsters, there's a focus on swarming with them. I mean, obviously, if you're going to make links, you need to barf out a whole bunch of monsters onto the field. But a lot of them also have additional effects on top of that. For instance, B Trooper Scale Bomber says when an insect is normal or special summoned, you can summon this from your hand. Also, when your opponent's monster activates its effect, you can tribute one insect monster, including itself, to destroy that monster. It doesn't negate the effect, it works kind of like Ghost Ogre, just getting it off the field. But it's really unique in that you have this card that is both an extender, but also something you can just leave on the field when it goes over to your opponent's turn, and have an additional bit of interaction. Another good example of this is Bee Trooper Sting Lancer. This thing summons itself by targeting two cards, one in your graveyard and one in your opponent's graveyard. The card in your graveyard gets shuffled back into the deck, so it's recycling, and the one in your opponent's graveyard gets banished. So this banishes for cost as its summoning condition, and you can summon this as a quick effect during either player's main phase. So during your turn, it's an extender, and during your opponent's turn, it can act sort of like a DD Crow, removing resources from the graveyard at instant speed. It also searches a spell trap when it's summoned, and the Bee Troopers have their own counter trap. It just negates any monster effect and destroys it. What makes it unique is that during your end phase, if this card is in the graveyard and you have an insect monster with 3,000 or more attack, you can banish an insect from your grave and then just set this card back on the field. So basically at the end of your turn, you're always going to get this back as long as you can keep an invincible atlas on the field or something like the, the mighty Neptune. Um, this is a one of, you can search really easily in this deck. It gets three banished monsters, shuffles them back into the deck to summon itself. And at the end of every end phase, you can target an insect you control and it gains a thousand attack. Which can actually be pretty good when stacked on to some of our other monsters like Seraphim Paperloperative. This can summon a uh, insect out of the graveyard during your opponent's turn. Which means you can bring back the Scale Bomber, have that interaction. You can bring back the Sting Lancer to get more summons. And we're also playing some Battle Wasps because these are all insects. They all special summon. Some of them lock you into insects, which is not really a problem. But Sting the Poison is kind of the same as Scale Bomber. It has an effect when it's summoned, you can search a Battle Wasp, which is nice on its own, but then as a quick effect, you can tribute any other insect monster 
to target an effect monster your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of the turn. So if you have this in your graveyard, you can also bring it back, and it's just another form of removal. That's kind of what makes this deck unique, is that most of the swarming tools also act as disruption tools depending on how you play them. That's also what makes this so very complicated. There's not really a linear combo that you're going to be doing every time. It really depends what extenders you have in your hand, what your opponent has, and what you want to build. If you get stopped halfway through your combo, you can usually keep going, but it's a matter of this decision tree of, do you want to use the scale bomber as material, or do you just want to leave it up and hope that that disruption is going to be enough to buy you some time until next turn? Overall, it's a rather complicated deck that I think works better when you see it played than hear it explained. So rather than go card by card, I'm just going to jump into the duels. If there's anything that we don't get to see during the first five duels, I usually take a moment at the halfway point to sort of explain more stuff, especially things about the ratios, like why I'm playing all these two ofs. If you're curious about that, that'll be in the halfway point, which again, you can find with the chapter markers down below. Regardless, let's go ahead and jump into it. Ten duels against random opponents on EDO Pro. We'll test this out, and hopefully, we'll have a little fun. <laughs> Alrighty, here we are, the first duel versus MD Wolves 1110. Perhaps a Perrin reference? Ooh, ah, hard to say, hard to leg. Hopefully people will, will get that by now, who can say? And we want to go second with this deck. Which is actually kind of controversial. There's a lot of people that build this as a go-first deck that sets up disruptions. It is fairly good at doing that, but I think this deck is better at swarming, and so I went for a beatdown focused deck. Um, it's probably not the most meta-viable version of the deck. You probably would want to go first if you look up more competitive versions. But this, this has the flexibility to do both. If you get stuck going first, Especially with a hand like this, where we just didn't get any of our, um, our go second cards. Like, it's really just not a big deal. And you could easily side out just a few tech cards to make this go first or go second. Let's see, and it looks like we're going against level 8 dragons. Some kind of blue eyes. Yep, there's the blue eyes. Now this can be kind of tricky. I know they got a new level, not blue eyes specifically, but I know there's a level 8 or a rank 8. Uh, choose a random card. Bingo machine, go! So I think I might have something to deal with. Either way, we'll see. We've got we got a couple starters. Sting the Poison searches any Battle Wasp. Normally you want to go for Pin the Bullseye. Because this can special summon itself if you control an insect monster. Okay, they're going for Dragubulon. But there is another Battle Wasp that uh, summons itself from the hand if you control an insect. So we have three extenders right here. We've also got a Bee Trooper Descendant, which is a one of. We can search it if we want to, but it summons a Bee Trooper token. That'll be negated because we got the Hope Harbinger. Let me read this again real quick. For the rest of the turn, you can add special summon. Um, can't target this with card effects. Okay, but I can beat over it, and I can beat over Titanic Galaxy. So I think I'm pretty good. So we're going to lead with the um, Sting the Poison. I'm going to use that to search the other Battle Wasp, assuming this goes through. They can Ash Blossom it. That would suck. And they Ash Blossomed it. Unfortunate. Um, that does put us in a pretty precarious situation. Uh, let's see... Yeah, I think, really, what it comes down to is if we can bait out the negation with the field spell. If they negate the field spell so that we're free to use Descendant, then we can still combo off. If they don't, we're kind of screwed, unfortunately. And they they got the bait. Good, we did it. Because they can only negate one spell trap per turn. So let's activate Sting the Poison. We could summon this. This has the effect to inflict 200 damage to your opponent. Don't forget it! Always inflict the 200 damage. Could be life or death. And then we're going to Bee Trooper Descent. One of the most basic combos you can do with this involves getting um, three monsters on the field. Or any three insects on the field. 
So we're going to take two of these and we're going to make Insector pick a Felena. When this is summoned, you can discard a card to attach an insect from your deck to another insect you control. And this is where we get the Resonance Insect. Gonna resonate. Um, I could summon all... Oh, no, I couldn't. Okay. Sometimes this can shuffle three insects back and then uh, draw you a card, which is cool, but we can't do it. We're gonna go for the Papal Operative. Use those. When Resonant Insects hits the graveyard, we can search a... What is it? A level 5 or higher insect type monster. Uh, and what do we want to do here? Do we just want to go for the Doomdozer? Yeah, we just want to go for the Doomdozer. Doomdozer is an important one of because it banishes insects from the graveyard. And Resonance Insect has an effect when it's banished. So we're going to banish this and the Pin the Bullseye. Because this we can summon back to get a negation with Papal Operative. Assuming we keep it on the field. When Resonance Insect is activated... Uh, you can send... Now, do I want to do that? I could destroy a card, or I could... So many combos. Yeah, let's send Goki Pole. When Goki Pole is sent to the graveyard, you can search a level 4 insect, and then if it's a normal monster, you can special summon it, and if you special summon it, you can destroy a monster that has higher attack. So we go for the Flying Sea Squadron. That lets us destroy a monster. We can't target this, um, but I can destroy it. So we'll prevent them from getting more stuff on the field. Let's see. And if they had something with less than 3,000, something I could beat over with 28 or 25, then I might go to battle with this and then bring back something. Oh. That is unfortunate. I don't think I've ever seen that effect resolve. Gains attack equal to one of those destroyed. Uh, that is unfortunate. That is very sad. I'm not sure if I have anything that can get over 6,000. It just gains it permanently? Yeah, I don't think... I could put everything into making Nightmare Unicorn, but that wouldn't do very much. I could make this. Detach 2, that negates the activation. I could make Zeus... Oh, no, I couldn't make Zeus. Uh, yeah, I think I have to go for the Halk of Fibrax, unfortunate, or the, the Nightmare Unicorn, unfortunately. That really sucks. Um, I think this would be better, though. Let's go ahead. Not better, but it'll, it'll, doing this first will help me out. Getting one of these in the graveyard. We can tribute off this. Uh, special summon a bee trooper from the deck. We're going to get the scout buggy. Scout buggy is going to summon another scout buggy from the deck or graveyard. And then we just use the three. Oh, we can't. We're locked into insects. That's what I get for being a Dumbo. Okay. That's fine, though. We can hopefully do it next turn. They're only going to be able to blow up one thing. Can't believe I'm making such big mistakes so early. And let's go ahead and activate the Bee Trooper while we're here. And, uh, yeah. Man, if it was... I guess I should have destroyed the Titanic Galaxy. It didn't really matter, either one. If I had done that, then we could have used this to attack over the 3,000. Because we could have boosted the attack instead of summoning two things. And then we would have had this, plus something else, I believe. Or at least just this. Now, the, the field spell is pretty nice. It lets us summon any bee trooper out of the graveyard by taking damage equal to its life points. Okay. One second. This can negate a monster effect by detaching. If it does, it shifts a monster, an insect. It gains, um... What was it? 500 defense, and then change its battle position. When this thing changes battle position, I can summon a, an insect out of the graveyard. And we are going to summon, um... Goki Pole, because when it's sent to the graveyard, we'll get a search. So we're in fairly decent position. But yes, this, um... 
Once per turn, you could summon a bee trooper out of the graveyard. It can't attack, unfortunately, which is bad for Invincible Atlas. That's, like, what you want to use it for. But summoning any of the other uh, bee troopers back out of the graveyard, pretty nice. And most of them have, like, a thousand attack. Especially this one, because if you summon it back, it doesn't negate its effects or anything. So you get an instant rank three. Okay, they're blowing that up. And then this also says when an insect is destroyed, you can summon a bee trooper token. Oh, this negates effects. Okay, I thought it only negated the activation of spell traps. There I go, not reading entirely again. Really should have gotten rid of this while I had a chance. And now they're making Verte. Just going into Verte, eh? Ultimate Fusion. Fusion summon a Blue Eyes monster. Well, at least it's not Dragoon, but... I feel like I might be in pretty bad condition if they've used all three. Opponent cannot target or destroy this with card effects. Target one card, destroy it. Alright. Let's go, Keypole. Let's get... Um... Resonance Insect, this will be the most useful. Uh, if this fusion summoned, you could target up to three cards instead. Can't attack the turn it was summoned. Alright! We're doing pretty good then. We still got this around. They got rid of the, the thing we needed, so... Yeah, I don't know why they didn't tribute this off for Verte. Um, let's go ahead. Unfortunately, we drew our other Golki pole. But we can use this, tribute it off. Special summon a beat summon. Special summon a beat. Oh, I should have gained the attack. Ah, that's fine. I think we could still make some. Oh no, we're locked into insects. Uh, activate this. Activate this. Let's. Oh yeah, we can search. We can search Kamungus. I forgot about searching Kamungus. What a fun thing to do. Um, and let's get our, yeah, let's just get the counter trap at this point. That's probably the best thing. So we can give them the Kamungus. We can go into battle. We want to leave them with a level eight. Do they have the thing that protects them from battle? No. We want to just crash the Atlas. Now nah, let's make them crash. Let's instead, we'll tack over the Kamungus. Bada bingo, we'll attack over the 5,000, and they lost connection. What a sad state of affairs. So, we bumbled that pretty badly, unfortunately. Just a good example of how technical this deck can be at times. Just all the different decision trees that you gotta do. I mean, this wasn't super complicated, I mostly just messed up, but... It did, you know, there are some decks where it's like you do your linear combo and you only mess up if you forget. This one's a lot, a little bit more complicated. But we still managed to win. This deck has a lot of good resource game. Let's go ahead into the second duel, see if we can get something a little bit more competitive and a little bit more better, better played by me. <laughs> Alright, here we are, duel number two versus the wind itself. Ooh, ah, a little spooky. Thinking of wind decks could be the Liralusk deck. That would be unfortunate. We've got a pretty decent hand full of extenders. This is not wind, this is water. Uh, oof. And if they're playing, there's a new water deck with Umi that's actually pretty, pretty difficult. Although it looks like they're playing Ice Barriers, which I think we have a pretty good matchup against. I don't want to get too cocky. I don't know, maybe there's some new, there's a lot of new water support in general. And these are all water. And... <sighs> Stalin. We don't have a whole lot of removal unless they activate effects. So this can actually be kind of difficult to get over. Um, let's see here. That's theirs. F3 to look at your extra deck, if you're curious. Yeah, I think it is just Nightmare Unicorn, or I could make a Cicada King, crash it into this, because it's got defense less than that, then make Zeus, but it feels so weird to use a Zeus to uh, out a Defender of the Ice Barrier. Okay, good, we don't have to. Risen Dragite, they can negate my spells! Oh no! 
Not all my various spells, whatever will I do? And that's it. That's all they got. They've got a spell negate against a hand with zero spells. They do got this one back row. So we can see what that is. Let's go ahead and summon the Sting the Poison. Again, we've already got the Pin the Bullseye, so we can get the other one. Okay, they're going to Infinite Permanence there. Since I've Normal Summoned an Insect, though, I can summon this. The Bay 17 Bomber. Uh, let's activate Pin the Bullseye. Don't forget it! 200! Pow! X gon' give it to you. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, in this case, we're going to make the B Trooper, because we have something else in our hand that we want to summon. This gives you an extra normal summon of an insect monster. I forget if we saw that in the first turn. So I can summon the Scout Buggy. Scout Buggy summons another Scout Buggy. There you go. Now we can roll these two together into the Pickle Felena, and they surrendered. Yeah, from there you roll them into the Pickle Felena, the Insector. We discard the Goki Pole. That gives us another search. It put Resonance Insect on the Armor Horn. The Link 2 plus the other Link 2 can go to make the, um, the, the full armor, ma or the, the Invincible Atlas while searching us like a level 8 monster. So we could, like, Kaiju that, or we could tribute this to get something out, or to get 2,000 attack. Either way, we probably could have OTK'd them even through the Risen Dragite. Hard to say for sure, hard to leg, but if not that, then we would have ended on, like, an invincible monster plus a bit of disruption, which is really the, the, the thing about this deck. This is why I made it, like, an OTK, or not an OTK. This is why I made this a beatdown deck, because it has the ability to swarm, get over your opponent's field, and its ability to put up negations or disruptions is fairly limited. You're usually getting one, maybe two. So going first isn't that great. But one or two negations when your opponent's already committed to their board can, can win the game for you. Once you've already got rid of some of their resources, that one or two negates is going to be very strong. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead into the third duel. Here it is. The eternal battle commences. Ringo versus Judai. There hasn't been a fan fiction yet that is more intense and exciting. I'm sure y'all can figure out why why I'm Ringo if you know who Ringo is. I feel like enough people still should know what Ringo is. Um, but yeah, if you're un if you're unfamiliar, the Bee Troopers. A lot of people are like, not the bees. I'm like, this is not a bee. This is like a ladybug, which is a type of beetle. Uh, Invincible Atlas is clearly not a bee. The the B in B Troopers isn't B. It's the the T is part of the pun. They're beetles. They're beetle roopers. Whatever a rooper is. And we're playing against Marincess, which is unfortunate because Marincess are pretty strong now. They just got some new support. Uh, again, probably not meta, but at least in this casual field, very strong. And importantly. I don't know exactly what they do, so fighting against them is going to be difficult. This is one of the decks I've, I've, I've always been kind of interested in, and now with the new support, I think I might try it. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see some Marincesses. Uh, for now, though, they're going to spend a whole lot of time comboing off, so we'll just cut away. I think we got a fairly good hand. Any hand you can normal summon Resonance Insect with an extender, you're pretty good. Although we also started with one of our, our Garnets. We have quite a few Garnets. I mean, we have to discard as part of our combo, so it won't be completely dead, but it's it's not the best, you see. Um, but we'll see. We'll see whatever they happen to put up. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. So this thing is immune to card effects, which at 4,500 is pretty brutal. Um... And they've got a totally awesome, which is not awesome for us, and whatever this set card is. So let's go ahead and normal summon this. Tempted to normal summon this, but if they if they negate it immediately, then like I don't have any I don't have any insects on the field to to summon the sting the poison. All right, we've got the sting the poison. Uh, let's go ahead and activate the Bee Trooper Formation. So if they destroy one of our insects, we'll get a token that we can use to extend our combos. 
I think that'll still work with Toad. I'm not exactly sure. Toad's always kind of weird because it negates, destroys, and then does other stuff. It's unfortunate that we don't have another extender because if we did, then we could chain block the resonance insect with the insector, depending on which one we want more. In this case, we're just going to have to go for the armor horn. When we go for the armor horn, we activate the resonance insect. That's a good negate if they're going to try to negate something. Yep. Fortunately, since it doesn't um, steal out of the graveyard, it just stays there. So unless this is also negation, we should be able to make Invincible Atlas from here while getting another thing. Let's just go ahead and hope this doesn't get negated. Unfortunately, pins the bullseyes only once per turn. So I can't summon another one. Yep, if you control a Princess Link monster, bad stuff happens! So, yeah, if we could have summoned this, we could have gotten two more bee troopers. We could have made, um, the Insector. We could have discarded something to get it equipped. But, unfortunately, with this particular hand, two negations at the right place is just what's going to kill us. Um. Yep. And I'm not sure if we can fight our way out of that. It depends what we top deck. This is one of the ones I've talked to a couple other people who played B Troopers and, and seen them. A lot of people don't like this card simply because it's one of the few that doesn't special summon. But it's just it's just a plus one. It's just anytime you can summon it, you're just getting an extra material. And it also helps you make rank threes, which you have a couple couple pretty good rank threes. The real question is if they're going to be able to OTK us through this. Seems likely, but it's hard to say. We're gonna have block a thousand plus one attack with the token. If we can make it through that, and they don't make another Toad, and they don't, like, recycle their hand trap, we might stand a chance, but hard to say. We'll be back once they're done. <laughs> Am I dead? I think I might be dead. If not, I'm pretty close. They've got a lot of, yeah, 49. Okay, they finally managed to, to summon lethal, but holy shit did that take a long time. Just, just thing after thing. I, I retract my statement about playing Marincess. If I have to combo for that long just to get lethal on board, I'm not sure it's worth it. Either way, we get our first loss. Let's go ahead into the fourth duel. <laughs> Alright, duel number four versus my arch nemesis player showing their ugly face around here yet again. Wow, that's just, it's just all battle loss today. Not starting with hardly any, uh, ooh, steel swarms. Interesting. I believe that... Pfft, excuse me? That was something I wasn't expecting. Although I guess people do use... Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, I've seen I've seen an engine with, like, rank 1 decks where you use this to search the dark contract with the gate, use the gate to get Lamia, then you can send this to the graveyard to summon the Lamia so you can get three level 1s, but they appear to just be playing, like, a legit DDD deck that also happens... To have Steel Swarm sell? An interesting thing. I feel like there's better cards that you can special summon from your hand. Something like the, uh, the, the, the Joker? The Joker Jester Clown? Either way, it's DDDs, so another board that's going to take a little while to get set up. Although, I don't know, they've, they've used a lot of their, uh, cards already. Usually they could do more with less... Hard to say. I don't know what this is. Some of their new stuff is unfamiliar to me. So once again, we're going to let them build up their board. We'll see whatever the hell they make, and then we'll see if we can play through it. I mean, we once again got the resin... We keep running into this thing where we have the field spell and no other um, uh, bee troopers for some reason, which is really weird. And we're drawing the, the one... Like, we have two Goki poles, and we're drawing them, like, almost <laughs> every duel. Okay, just one so far, it looks like. I mean, if they end on that, we'll be pretty good. I can negate I can negate one, or play through one. Especially depending on what we get. Hard to say. Hard to leg. <laughs> Alright, well, I think unfortunately... Well, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, they have three negates, which is difficult to play through. So let me look at this. Um, 
Once per chain, when a monster card activates its effect, you can detach two materials or destroy a dark contract. Attach that card as a material. So non-targeting, non-destruction. They have a um, spell trap negate, and they have an omni negate. Unfortunate. I think we need to get rid of this for sure, because that's some bullshit right there. All right, going into the Halka Fibrax right now, just to draw a card. They have a level nine they can make, or are they just okay? Um, let's go for this. It's the only spell trap. I mean, granted, they can just target it whenever I try to activate the effect. Okay, normal summon resonance insect. Special summon pin the bullseye. Unless they negate it with Borlode Savage Dragon. Nope, okay. Activate pin the bullseye. Take your 200 damage! I will not go quietly into the night! Um... And I don't have a way to get three on because I drew the Goki pole. So we're going to go for the, the Armor Horn. Yeah, we're going for the Armor Horn. Armor Horn. Will they negate the one resonance? No. Um, I could search another Kaiju, but it wouldn't be good enough. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Do I want to get the Goki pole? Yes. Yes, please. So, let's go ahead, banish these two to summon the Doomdozer. That'll activate this. That'll send the other Goki Pole. That Goki Pole will trigger. If they don't negate this, then they're going to be in some bad trouble. Because the rest of the effect will resolve, yeah, okay. So the must negate Goki pole. So that's all their negations except for the spell trap, which I can't use anyway. So let's do this. Oh fuck, they can synchro shoken. What do they got here? Baron de Fleur. Shit sucks, bro. They could probably negate that. No? Alright. Um, yeah, let's get the Twin Bow. This is another extender. Uh, let's see. So, let's try... Try the Twin Bow. This is only once per turn, so... What is once per turn? I could target... Okay. Negate that activation, and if you do, destroy it. So, there's no point in trying the Insector, because they will just negate and destroy it. Um, instead, what I want to do is go for the Invincible Atlas. Oh wait, will I have... Um, one second. How many bugs do I have in the graveyard? Okay, it is worth making the pick of Felina. I'm not going to use the effect, though. Just so I have an additional bug in the graveyard. Oh, what? Do you have... Okay. I guess they can activate this at any point. Um, yeah, and then we go for the Invincible Atlas. He's invincible! Unless you got Nibiru. I mean, I guess you could Nibiru everything. Okay, so, the Armor Horn can summon itself out of the graveyard by banishing three cards from the graveyard. Let's banish these three. And then, I can activate the Armor Horn, tribute off this to either summon a Bee Trooper or gain... Gain 2,000. Uh, considering the negate on the field, I just want to gain the 2,000. They can negate that. But it can't be destroyed by card effects. And I don't have any... Okay. Um, the real question is, what do I want to do? Okay, I think I'll leave that, but I'll kill the... We'll kill the Siegfried... All 
right? And you gain a 2,000. We'll kill the Kamungus. I'll mill a card. Not sure if that... I mean, it was their top deck, so... Would have been good. And... Unfortunately, that's it. Now, the the Invincible Atlas is difficult for some decks to get rid of, but not all decks. Weird that they negated that for so long. Okay, so they're bringing that back out. So at least I don't have to worry about another negate. And they can't walk over this. They can... Let's see. Once per turn, you can tribute one, then target one monster on the field and destroy it. All right. Well, this can't be targeted. Oh, this does come back. Okay. I guess it's until the next standby phase. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. I thought they cut themselves off of a search. I guess they just didn't want to take the damage. They had more than enough life points. Yeah, we're in a pretty precarious situation. Unfortunately, one of the one of the decks that can pretty easily get over 3,000 would probably be um, DDD. If they can make Kali Yuga, if they can make um, that that thing that they made earlier. What's it called? Uh, the new one. Did I banish it or something? No, I sent it back to the... Oh, no, it's up here. Yeah, Amnesty King Doom Machina. <laughs> This thing has... Oh, it has 3,000. Okay. And... Doo -doo -doo. You can also Ixie summon this. Uh, I have to activate an effect in order for them to steal it. Okay. But yeah, I know they have some... They, they have quite a few monsters with like 3,500 attack. So if they can summon one of those and get rid of the Atlas, then I'm probably just dead. If not, then we might just have hope. So let's see again they're going to they're going to combo off for their turn and we'll see what they can do. <laughs> ah, interesting. So they negated their own effect to gain 1800 until the end of the turn. I believe they're only doing half damage though. Yeah. And this is damage step. So I'm not taking a whole bunch of damage. They wouldn't be able enough to kill me anyway. But they are going to be left with this, which means I can't really use the B-Trooper formation. My best bet, really, is to, like, run Goki Pole into something and then get the, um, the normal monster and then summon it and blow up a card and that would allow me to, like, combo off. Um, this is when a monster effect that special summons a monster. So, if I do this, is it, it's not during the damage step. Do, do, do. Um, target one B trooper, special summon, it cannot attack this turn. Also, you lose attack. Okay, so they, if they negate this, then I don't take the damage. So let's try to summon back the uh, Invincible Atlas. I assume they'll use the Siegfried to stop that. Yeah. Okay. So I don't take the damage. Um... Yeah, I think what I need to do is just crash a Goki Pole. I think that's my only hope at this point. Oh, wait, I can... I can use Almirage. I don't have to crash it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, let's try it. Almirage. Goki Pole. Okie dokie pokey. Um, if I want to search anything else. This I can special summon by banishing a card from my graveyard. Uh, do I have any in my graveyard that I want to discard? No. No, I think the best thing is to just go for this. This summons itself. Destroy a monster. Get rid of that. Then I can summon things. Oh, everything has an effect more than I... <laughs> Alright, another one. Uh, unfortunately, the only thing I could make is... Maybe I should have destroyed this first and then went for this. That probably would have been optimal, but I think they could have chained in response. Uh... Pfft. Yep, I think we lose this one, unfortunately. 
a sad state of affairs. We tried our hardest, but we didn't get, like, a whole lot of our go second tools, as many as I would have liked. At least they're taking damage because of these. That's neat. Yup, and with that, unfortunately, it's over. But we put up a pretty good fight, considering they had three three disruptions and we didn't open with, um... I guess we opened with a kaiju. Probably could have put more going second staples in here. I don't know. DDD is one of those ones where, like, you kind of just have to side in, like, hand traps and Nibiru and Dark Ruler no more. They're going to put so much stuff on the board. But I think it's, it's, it's pretty showing that we at least put up a good fight against them, regardless. Let's go ahead into the fifth duel and see what else runs our way. <laughs> All right, here we are, duel number five versus a luber. Maybe we should go, maybe, maybe, maybe in uh, the next five duels, once we get past the halfway point. I'll start going first and see what I can do there. We're getting to go second a lot, and this deck isn't as good going second as I maybe previously thought. It's always hard to tell when I, when I play against, um... When I play against people, when I test this, it's mostly against other patrons and stuff. And a lot of them, since they're fans of me, they're, uh, they're fans of janky decks. So it's much more casual when I go up against stuff like DDD and Dinosaurs and, and uh, VW. It's like, whoa, hey, I wasn't quite prepared for this. I can OTK over, um, I don't know, what's something I faced in testing? The new Cyber Dark stuff? Which is nothing to sniff at. They can make, like, a 5,000 towers that, like, has a bunch of stuff, but you could just get the Kamungus and get over it. But, uh, yeah, not sure how good I'll do against this. Again, they're gonna combo off, especially now that we've seen the Scrap Raptor, so... We'll be back! <laughs> Welp! That just about does it. Abyss Dweller for the Graveyard effects, this for the face-up effects, and this just to flip everything face down, and they're gonna take a card out of my hand. Most likely, uh, what's the more deadly here? This can just negate two monster effects. Um, I might be able to chain block this. But if this, if they flip everything face down, it's just over. Unfortunately, I opened with, like, more garnets. This damn Goki pull. there's a reason I only played it at one. Uh, none of the graveyard effects are activating anyway, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I just lost this. I can't do the resonance insect when they have all this. And they took my one extender out of my hand! Motherfucker! Uh, yeah, and this can't activate its effect. I can normal summon this, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't do anything. When this is destroyed by battle, you can add one B trooper. Um... Yeah, nothing activates in the graveyard, so I'm just doomed. Uh, my one hope will set this. I might be able to do something, not in the battle. No, I'm just screwed. Let's just go to the halfway point. I guess I'll just have to start doing it. When did all the casual decks get the ability to make five negates in a turn? <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the halfway point. This is where I take a moment to just be like, hey, you know, if you're enjoying the show, if you like this um, check out the Patreon. That's mostly where the show is funded by. I do have ads. I keep them at a minimum. Specifically because I do not like ads. I prefer, I prefer to just get a dollar from you if you're, if you're willing to give it to me. And if you donate two dollars, you can get these sleeves I made, the little Ringo negation. Not just for this deck, but for every deck. You can get on my Discord. There's a lot of cool rewards. Check it out. Also, while I'm here, I should explain the rest of this. There's not a whole lot that I feel needs explaining. Most of my ratios are pretty standard. Um, the, the one big thing is that I'm playing, like, two Kamungus, two Galaxy Cyclone, and two Infinite and Permanence. And the reason I'm doing that is because you basically have six slots in this deck where you could put tech cards, like Hand Traps, Solemns, pretty much any generic card that you want. And in testing, like, I tried doing, like, three Kamungus, three Infinite and Permanence, but then I get hit by a whole bunch of back row decks, especially that new Umi deck that just has, like, all the spell traps everywhere, and it just completely wrecks me. So then, like, I took out the Kamungus, and then when my opponent summons something that's, uh, can't be destroyed, 
by any means. Stuff like Dragoon, stuff like the, uh, the new, uh, Cyber Dark Monster. Then I have no out to that. So then I had these two, and then I had no hand traps. So basically what I decided to do was just split the difference. Instead of running three and three, I run two, two, and two. Because it's the Wild West of Yu-Gi-Oh! I can run into anything. And then I just have the other copy of each one in the side deck. And depending on what you're going up, back row heavy decks, put in the Galaxy Cyclone, take out the Kamumbagus. You've got big monsters you need to worry about, take out the Kamumbagus, put in these two. Um, ideally, you could also run uh, Lightning Storm instead of the, the Galaxy Cyclone. The only reason I'm not is because uh, since I do this show every other week, I try to make every episode not the exact same staples. I used Lightning Storm uh, last time in the Halloween deck, so I didn't want to use it again on, on this one. I, I try to keep the staples rotated around so that you're not seeing the exact same cards every single time. This is the superior spell trap removal. You should probably just run that. In fact, I don't know why I didn't even think about this, but I should probably just replace this with, with Harpy's Feather Duster. I always forget that that's at one. Like, yeah, it's a one of, but it's better spell trap removal than this. Just, just forget sometimes. It's been so long that card's always been on the ban list. But yeah, other than that, most of the rest of the, like, one ofs and two ofs are, are kind of things like, you know, you need the one squatter because you're going to summon it off of Goki Pole. You need a normal monster. A lot of people use a monster with a 1700 attack because the, the text on Goki Pole says, summon a normal monster. And then, uh, destroy a monster on the field that has attack greater than or equal to it. So, if you have a monster with 2,000 attack, some lower level things, like the, the ice barrier card that almost floodgated us earlier, that would have been undestructible by squatter. So, some people like to have something a little bit lower so they can destroy 2,000 attack monsters. I honestly don't think it's that important. You should maybe tech it depending on what the meta is. But there are some, like, you could put in a Petite Moth that has 200 attack, and then you have the ability to destroy just about any monster. Or this, which can't destroy some of the lower level stuff, but has the most attack of any normal monster. So, if you can destroy something, and then you're in an open game state, you have the most possible attack. Some people also like uh, level 3s. I think that's the other one, is the, the 1700 attack has 3 levels. And that'll more easily allows you to go into Cicada King, which is just a good negate. Uh, a lot of people aren't playing uh, uh, the Virtual World Dragon, the Long Long. I played this because I found there were instances where, like, I was stuck being able to make a rank 3 on, like, a simplified game state. And I wanted something with more than 1,200 attack. And this is, like, the highest attack rank 3 that doesn't have a downside or require specific materials. And it, like, actually has a pretty decent effect. They can't be targeted while it has Ixie material, which is not perfect, but again, if you've cleared the, full, the the field and you're in a top deck war and you just top deck the scout buggy, being able to get two of those and make a 2400 beater that can't be targeted, just, just pretty nice. As for the rest of the extra deck, most of it's fairly standard. I'm playing a couple Nightmares. I'm playing the uh, Blackluster Soldier of Chaos because you can make it with the Doom Dozer and get its effects or with the, uh, the Mighty Neptune if you need to. Sometimes it's nice to be able to go into something that has a little bit of protection, but not mandatory by any means. Uh, I saw some builds that were playing like three Armor Horn or three Picophilena, which is understandable because these are like your bread and butter combos. But you have ways to recycle them, and even though this deck can get grindy, it's never gotten so grindy that like, I needed to use all three of both of these. Usually if you're in that position where you need a third one, you're, you're, you've already lost. I'm moving up to the main deck, I'm only playing one Fly and Sting, the Counter Trap. I think that's correct, most people just seem to be playing one. It's a hard once per turn, so even if you get multiple of them, you can't activate multiple, multiple of them. Um, I saw some people that weren't playing Descent, you don't necessarily need it, it's just something like, if you're gonna get a free search and you already have your field spell and the recurrable counter trap, it's nice to have something that can just get you an extra monster on board, but not necessarily needed, you could just replace it with a hand trap. I think I mentioned already some people weren't playing the scout buggy or were only playing it at 2. I like it as a normal summon, especially with Scale Bomber, just being able to get those three monsters on board, but I understand. 
And I also saw some people not playing as many Assault Rollers. I haven't gotten a chance to summon this yet, but you summon it by banishing an insect from your graveyard. Which is not only free material on board, it banishes your resonance insect, that triggers its effect, and get three cards banished so that you can make Mighty Neptune. Pretty good, but unlike all the other bee troopers, it doesn't really have any other good effects. Like, there's a bunch of text on it, but all it is is it gains 200 attack for every insect you control, and if it's destroyed by battle, it searches. Which, neither of those really matter all that much. Uh, you might be able to use it to OTK. I tried getting this down to two, but I just, you need that extra, like, extender. You need an extra searcher on there. Some people would probably prefer the, the air blast, the rapid fire. I didn't, I had this in here for a while, and I just didn't see a situation where it was good. It's only really good if you top deck it, and, uh, you, you rarely do. Uh, there's also the Goki Pull. Some people play this at three, some people play it at one. I had it at one through most of my testing, uh, because it's only a hard once per turn, right? So even though you can use Resonance Insect over and over and over again, which is why you want to play this at three, it's like the best normal summon, you can send it from your hand, you can send it, I think it has to go from the, yeah, it has to go from the field. But you can just do so many different things with it. You really want to play this at three, but the Goki Pole is a hard once per turn. So, having three doesn't really help. Um, and as you're seeing, having two is surprisingly bricky for some reason. But there's been so many times when, like, I activate this, I get the one thing, and then on subsequent turn, I really wish I could just grind out and had one more Goki pole. So I added two in. But those ratios are, are kind of up for debate. Um, just about everything else, I think, is pretty standard. You want three Sting the Poison, you want three Pin the Bullseye, three Twin Bow, because you just always want the ability to extend her. Same thing with, with Scale Bomber. Same thing with this. Um, some people, especially the Go First builds, might just play two or even one Sting Lancer. It's level seven, so it's searchable off of Resonance Insect, and you can't really summon it during your turn, during your first turn, because your opponent will have, um... No cards in the graveyard for the summon. But if you can get into the graveyard and you have the field spell, you can summon it back. Like, yeah, you take a 2400, but you get to search the counter trap, so it's definitely worth it. And you can also just, like, use it during your opponent's turn to, to banish stuff. So I think it's worth it at three. Other than that, there's a couple other hand traps. DD Crow I tried for a while. I think that's fairly good in this format, but just... It's hard to play these specific outs online because there's so many decks where, like, I'll, I'll be playing against this, and then I'll play against, like, Guru Amazement, and the fact that I can banish from the graveyard is of no use here. The same thing with Contact C. So if your opponent normal or special summons, you can summon this to their field, and they must fusion, link, or synchro, etc. They can't summon out of the extra deck unless they use this. And some people don't have generic cards that they can just use this as material, so it acts as a lock. In certain metas, this can be really good as a hand trap, especially because it's searchable. But again, just online, like, I'll, I'll be fighting decks that, like, just don't go into the extra deck, or if they do, that's just all generic materials. They don't need specific stuff on their field. So, just wasn't really worth it. But something worth considering if you want to try to do this. Anyway, let's go ahead back to the next five duels. And again, this time I'm going to try to go first. I'm going to see if I can build some first turn boards, see if we have a little bit more luck with that, because this going second into established boards is it's not working as well as it did in testing. <laughs> All right, six duel versus hero. We get to go first, and we open with our kaiju and our back row removal. Right when we go first. Fortunately, we did open with, like, hella extenders. Discount extender warehouse. We've got the sting, the poison... We've got the scale bomber, and they just surrendered. We could have, we could have, though. We could have been a champion. We had so many things we could have done. They just didn't let us do it. A sad state of affairs, to be certain. Uh, I don't think I'm going to count that one, because I literally only played one card. So let's see if I can find a real six duel. <laughs> Kaliba! Kaliba! Ooh! Ooh! Ha he ha ha Oh great we're playing banish the deck question marks Oh they're playing the uh the Giga Rays the Gandora of Destruction and Dragon Link it looks like what did I banish? No my one Neptune I needed that Alright well they're just the one back row 
And it's Trickstar Reincarnation. Just trying to banish all my things. Drone Lockbird. Okay, so I can't summon any more. So they're just, just all troll decks today, I see. Just discount troll deck warehouse. Okay, can we OTK them through this is the question. We got this. We got that. Take your 200. Um, we've got to make the anger horn going into that. I cannot search because of Droll and Lockbird. Unfortunate. Let's normal summon this. Let's banish the Goki pole to summon this. They're just giving each other. That's 5,000. They're not dead, but at least they've taken a lot of damage. Just that Droll and Lockbird stopping the Goki pole really kind of hurt. Well, what does this do again? If a card is added, uh, your opponent cannot. Okay. So there's no real point in going into the Picafelena and doing all the stuff from there. Because I can't activate Resonance Insect. I can't do the things I want to do. So instead, we're just going to go straight into Full Armor Master. And then we're going to set the, the Scout. Ringo people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Ringo, buddy. What do you, oh wait, actually, I can... Yeah, okay. We do this, banish these three. Summon that. We can tribute this off. Special summon a bee trooper from the deck. We'll get this. This will summon another one. Fortunately, we have another one. I really should have checked that beforehand. And we'll just make the Cicada King. So that's two monster negates. Two monster negates and a 3,000. Granted, if they summon Grand Maju to Aiza, I'm probably just dead. Uh, must be special summoned by your hand by sending two other monsters. All right. So they've got three cards and I've got two negations. Banish this card. Place that monster on the bottom of the deck. Draw one card. You can only use each effect of chaos. Okay, now they've got four cards. Banishing that, searching the Wyvern Burster. Normal summon this. Send any number of dragons. Um. Negate its effects. Um. Whose level equals the combined levels? Yeah, I think I want to save this for something that can actually hurt me. Specifically, two other monsters from your hand or field to the graveyard. It's 300 for every battle. Pay half your life points, do one of these things. Yeah, so it looks like they're just doing Giga Ray's Turbo, which, I mean, I can negate with Fly and Sting. Go for it. Unless they got the Kaiju. Cross Sheep. All right. Gotcha. The Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. Alright, summon there. If monster is summoned at the zone, it points to, but it's not a ritual or anything, so you don't really get any effect. I don't know what this guy's up to. Any idea, chat? Is it just the is it just the Gandora's Turbo? Yeah, there you go. Gandora's Turbo. He big. Now he dead. Get that shit out of my face, Counter Trap. Go. You tried your best. You tried so far and you got so hard and in the end you just invested too much into a single boss monster. Fuck. Can they summon again? GG. Okay, good. Good. I was, I was worried. I was most worried indeed. Anytime you start a game where you get like half the shit in your, your deck banished, it's not fun. But we did it. Let's go ahead into the seventh duel. The fightin' seventh. Okay, okay. Okie dokie. Seventh duel. The fightin' seventh. We're gonna go. Do we get to go first? 
Yes, we do. And we started with Resonance Insect and any Extender and Mighty Neptune. So as long as they don't got an Abiru, we're pretty good. Hit them with 200. Don't forget it! Very important. Uh, we're going to... Armor Master. Yet again. Hacha! Let's go ahead and we're going to get the Gigamantis. We are going to activate. Summon another one. We are going to make the Seraphim Papal Operative. It's three. It gets its stuff. It's, this, this thing gets counters when it's summoned, and then you can remove a counter to summon a, a monster. We're going to get one of these. That way we can do stuff. And then what we're going to do... Um, we're going to special summon the Doom Dozer by banishing both the Resonance Insects, because they're not only not once per turn, they're not even once per chain. So we get two of these... Two sends to the graveyard. We're going to send one Goki Pole so that we can do that. And the other one, we're going to send the uh, Scale Bomber. Activate the effect of Goki Pole in the graveyard. Yes. Let's just summon the final Resonance Insect for next turn. So that can summon that back. We'll be able to summon that during the opponent's turn. Really, I just want to get one more summon, so let's go ahead and, um... We're going to banish that. Summon this. Oh, I should have done the Goki. It's fine. Um... Then we can shuffle all three back. Summon out Mighty Neptune! I don't know why I like Mighty Neptune so much. He's just cool. He's just a cool guy. He just does cool things. And, um... I think that's just about it. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to summon this out during the... right now. But we've got a fairly good thing. So, during the end phase, this will give something a thousand attack. Let's just give it to the Papal Operative so it'll survive. And then we'll go ahead and activate this to get the Scale Bomber out. So we've got a whole wall of monsters, one bit of negation, and one bit of graveyard. And if they can't get rid of all of this, then we're going to have a lot of stuff for next turn. We could easily go into the, um, the uh, Mighty Atlas. Invincible Atlas. I don't know how I could forget that name. It's such an awesome name. So we've got two bits of disruption, though. What will they do? Alright, starting with the Foolish Burial. Which, I mean, like, could there be a better target for Sting Lancer? What the fuck? Oh, it's that blue eye shit. Oh, and they're doing Dragon Shrine. Okay, so I think I want to... Yeah, there's a new Blue Eyes card, and this thing with Skill Drain is, like, absolutely devastating. Other cards cannot be destroyed by card effects. Blue Eyes Jet once per turn. When a Blue Eyes Dragon is destroyed, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. And if it battles, you can return one card to the hand. So they're going to blow up Atlas. We're going to activate this. I mean, the Atlas is going to get blown up. Um, you could special summon... Okay, so it's going to come back. So we're just going to get that off the field. We'll tribute the Mighty Roller. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and just send the Goki Pole back into the deck and also get the Jet Dragon banished so they can't use it. And then when this is summoned, I get to search. And when Invincible or when Mighty Neptune is destroyed, it just summons itself back. You just get back the mighty Neptune. And this would have gotten me the field spell. So even if theoretically they absolutely just demolish our board with the other three cards in our hand, we're going to normal summon Resonance Insect. We're going to be able to use it for um, 
Al Mirage and get the Goki Pole thing. Just summon another monster. We're going to be able to summon back anything from our graveyard, including the Sting Lancer, which could get us the Counter Trap, which could get us the thing that lets us um, summon a token and possibly blow up the field. We're just in a very good position for the next turn. So I think that worked out pretty well. Let's go ahead into the eighth duel, the Ocho, and see if we can continue this win streak. <laughs> All right, here we are. Duel number eight versus Mo Fiend. Oh. Almost clicked second again, just out of habit. We want to go first with this. And they're just giving me, they're giving me all my go second tools when I'm going first. I'm not liking this. Let's normal summon this. I think we can still do some stuff. Even if it's not great. In fact, this might be very bad. Let me think. No, we can still do some. Okay. Put this down. Hit him with the old 200 tickle. That's time in the round. <laughs> um, and then I don't have... Ah, this is so frustrating not having the third extender. Get hit with my frickin' garnet. Uh, okay, so we're gonna make Mighty Horn. You get Mighty Horn. Mighty Horn allows us for another summon, which if we had, like, anything that was good, this would be awesome. Most of our monsters get some kind of benefit on summon. Instead, we're just going to go into the, um... The Papal Operative. The Papal Dapple. Uh, ooh, and I could bring back... The Mighty Horn by banishing some stuff. I don't think I want to do that. Instead, we're just going to set this... Uh, do we activate this to get free tokens... No, I think we want to have something where we can come back next turn, potentially. So, yeah, we're just going to end there. And then during the opponent's turn, we're going to activate this. Unless they've got a infinite impermanence of their own. Oof, Dimension Shifter. That, that is brutal. Okay, so we're going to get this. Sting the Poison. Ash Blossom. All right. Yeah, that's the cool thing, is you can bring back Sting the Poison. This is a um, search, so we get another, like, Bee Trooper. Or not Bee Trooper. Brave Token. If you control no, then... Okay. Summon the Brave Token. And this can, uh, quick effect, tribute off an insect monster to negate a monster's effects. Unfortunately, they're playing Brave Token. Which is about making a token, and then giving it equip cards. And it doesn't have effects, so it's not... My ability to negate effects is of no use here, Spider-Man. Granted, I can tribute over the token and do stuff. Troll notes, if you summon a brave token, you summon this from your hand. Uh, when a card or effect is activated, well, you control brave token, you can shuffle this card into the deck, and if you do, negate it. If a monster is normal, somebody take one equip spell that mentions brave tokens and equip it. Fortunately, only 2,000. They get to equip to a brave token. Um, while this card is equipped to a non-effect monster, you can target one card and control it to send it to the hand. This card is sent to the graveyard. You can target one brave token and equip it to this target. And they're playing Exorcisters. They just hate my graveyard all over the place. This shit sucks. I'd been much better going first. Um, target one Exorcister. Special summon from your extra deck. Okay. And they just shut down my entire graveyard. Dang dimensional shifter. Shifting my dimensions. Um, uh, this was Ixie Summon. You could target one card that controls or in their graveyard and banish it. They're searching. Um, um add one extra sister spell trap. Yeah, that's fine. Fortunately, this thing can't tribute itself, which is what I'd want to do. Fortunately, 2,500 can get over this. I think it's just better to leave everything out there. They just got another one. So they can just summon, they can just rank up. Uh, this card is actually summoned by using an Exorcister as material. 
Huh, I wonder why they didn't banish anything. Are they, like, locked into certain effects or something? Uh, yeah, I guess it's in my hand. It's not gonna be banished, so I can summon it again. That'll be cool. Battle phase. I'll take some damage, but I won't be dead. Fortunately, this lasts until my turn. Um... While you control Brave Token. Okay, so I just want to tribute over the Brave Token. I believe. Uh, doo -doo -doo. During your main phase, you can add one monster to the list. Brave Token, you send. Doo -doo -doo. I haven't read into this yet, so I'm not exactly... Okay, so if I get rid of it, I should just be good. Um, they want to banish that, which is the only one I have in my graveyard. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just negate that. I need that. I thought this was when this was summoned. Interesting. Um... Okay. So we get rid of the Brave Token. We activate the Field Spell. Will that be able to do... We can bring back this. Plus that and make a rank 3. I don't think that really helps, but I can maybe attack over some stuff. Not be destroyed by a monster. You can only use uh, this card as Ixie summoned. You can activate this effect. Neither player can special summon monsters from the graveyard. You attach to add. Alright, and this will only have 1800 attacks, so it won't be able to get over anything. And they just locked me out of the graveyard, which is like what I need to exist. I kind of want the graveyard to exist. Yeah, so we really just gotta hope they don't have enough to OTK me here. Why is it freezing up? Is it lagging? Don't do this to me now. I'm probably dead, but I might not be dead. Especially with this generating a token, right? So they attack into this. It's destroyed. I get another token. So I only take uh, at most 2400. And then I would have the things I need in the graveyard to do stuff. Oh wait, no I wouldn't because I banished one. I should have just set this. That would have been the better move. Then it would be a surprise. Ooh, ah. Instead... Okay. Let's... Okay, it'll still let me do this. Uh, I'm just setting a monster. Could be anything. Who knows? Hard to say. Hard to leg. I just gotta hope they can't get another monster with like 2,000 attack on board. Oh wait, no. They can detach to special summon a monster. Rip Aroni. Oh, these Exorcisters are so annoying. Cause they're one of those they're 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 like a deck that's built around stopping other specific decks. They're all graveyard hate. So it's like if your deck does a lot of stuff in the graveyard, then they're they're absolutely brutal. And if they don't, then nothing happens. Like they'll never be a good deck. Uh, yeah, we'll activate this. Oh yeah, and this gets, this searches when it's destroyed by battle. I forgot! Oh, and I could summon this during main phase two if possible. Uh, yeah, I think that's the best to go for. So I'll take... Yeah, at most 24. Like I said, 24, baby. Head in for the 24, so we're still alive. We've got a thing. Question is, what do we take out of their graveyard? Anything? Can we? Oh, wait, they still have that quick play. No, they used it last turn. I want to use this during my turn, so that if that's a uh, spell trap that can stop me, I've got this on the field at least. 
Um, once per turn, during your main phase, you can add one monster that specifically lists a brave token. Yeah, you know what? Let's just do this now. Uh, what do I want to shuffle back? The Flying Black Sea Squatter. And let's get this out of the graveyard. And then I'll get to search. I already have the field spell. Oh yeah. I forgot that these... I thought the X... Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, let's get this. This is a grave card leaves the graveyard. Because of the opponent, you can just summon a Nixie monster on top of this. Better to deal with it now than to have to deal with the, the Bee Trooper formation later. And then banish the Sting Lancer. Off you go. So I'll have whatever I top deck and a token. That's that's all I've got. But hopefully if they can't summon a brave token. Oh, they've got this. Neither player can target Exorcisters with card effects. And it's the dragon. Yeah, this, I don't think my deck can out this. Unless I draw the kaiju, but they already have a kaiju because I gave them one last turn. Yeah, I've got Sting and the Poison. Can't summon this back because it would kill me. This would almost kill me. Um, can't be destroyed by battle is the unfortunate thing. So I can't even, like, Atlas over it. Uh, I could... Blackluster Soldier, but as soon as I activated the effect, they would steal it. Because this negates and steals... Yeah, it steals permanently. Fortunately, you just kind of need something for that. Uh, okay. Activate this. Whatever this set card. I mean, I think I'm doomed anyway, but I can at least try. Never give up, you know, never surrender. Um, yeah, normal summon. Activate this, summon back the Link 2, and take a thousand damage. Leave me with a hundred. And they just activate the thing that lets them summon two Exorcisters from the deck. So that when I summon out of the graveyard, they can get two things. Because it'll happen in response to this. And there you go. That's my life's over. The world is over. My deck focused around the graveyard, happened to go up against Exter Sisters. Ah, let's go ahead to the ninth duel. <laughs> All right, ninth duel versus Millennium, and it looks like we're gonna have to go second again. Probably yes. And Tri Brigade on the casual server. You know, that, that rogue deck that's not very good these days. You know, just try Brigade. That's, that's fine. Should go to the, I should go to the, apparently I'm on the wrong server. Who would have known, who would have thunk it? <laughs> All right. So they've got, they've got the Rugal and they've got a Revolt. So they can, wait, what does Revolt do again? It's been so long since I've played against. Any number of beast warriors that are banished or in your graveyard. Okay. So yeah, they can st they can still make a strike or whatever it's called now. Uh, what do I want to normal summon? This gets me extra stuff. This gets me things. Um, I think based on the fact that yeah, I think we'll go for this. We'll activate that effect to get another one. Based on the fact that their removal is just, um, you know, uh, banishing cards, we want to get as many cards on there as possible. Casual. British, I, I don't know. I was I was saying that, I, like, when I was testing this, I was like, are B-Troopers meta? They might be meta. And everyone was telling me, no, they're rogue. 
They're high rogue at best. I could be wrong. Entirely possible. Yeah, let's go for the extra normal. The extra normal first. Surprised they haven't revolted yet. Either way, I've already got... The neat thing is, like, if they stop the combo now, I've got two things of negation already. Pin the bullseye. Time to give you the old pin and stin. <clears throat> Let's go! Behold, the power of 200 damage. That's time in the round. Yes, I will make that every single time. Uh, let's go for Picafelena. Can I not? Oh, I have to use this. Unfortunate. Uh, yep, I didn't think about my placement very well. I was hoping I could leave that so I'd at least be able to tribute off the thing they do. Okay, let's... Yeah, this I can't activate again. So, yeah, let's put it on this. Uh, do I have three I want to send back? Yes. One, two, three. Another Sting the Poison that I can't activate. Unfortunate. Um, all right. They are really good at holding their tempo. Let's go for this. And then we'll use this. I wonder what that other trap is. Is it just two revolts? Called by the grave. Clever. But I think I can, we can shuffle this back into the deck. We'll get, we'll, we'll miss the banish, unfortunately. But I'll still get the search. Um, and what do I want? The kaiju or do I still want the doomdozer? I think I want the kaiju. Uh... Yeah, let's go for that. And we'll get the search. Let's get the, uh, we're going to get the field spell at this point. They've still got that. Okay. I have nothing to get over the shriek. I have, I could banish everything to do that. This will at least allow me to get rid of the Shriek. I know that's probably not its name. Wait, do I have enough? I do not. Yeah, this will at least debate out whatever. Uh, let's banish these three. Hello there. Activate, tribute this. We'll just summon more B troopers from the deck. More things to do more things. Uh, in this case, because I've already used all the other ones, it's probably best to get the assault roller because that'll have the most, most attack. No, it won't. I'm dumb. Uh, okay, battle phase. Actually, I should threaten this. Why aren't they doing the, um... Uh... I wonder why they haven't done the revolt. That just seems weird. Kill the Fractar. Like, yeah, it would get destroyed by Scale Bomber, but they would still get something. There they go. So 
So they get four. I can finally find out what find out what the hell this thing's name actually is. Shireg. Used to be Shrag when I first played it. I haven't played these since like pre-release when the names weren't official. Uh, let's just... This is non-targeting, and I don't want to lose my Atlas forever. So let's tribute off the Atlas. Your choice. Yep, they went for the highest attack, even though this gets effects when it's destroyed by battle, and this can tribute itself to do stuff. Okay, and then they're getting a whole bunch of things. Um, we'll just go ahead and get Mighty Neptune. Let's uh, shuffle these three back in. Mighty Neptune. Big Chungo. 3,000. Good luck, Chadsworth. Alpha, the master of beasts. Well, I have to stop that. But you negate, you got, you baited something out. Oof. Draw two cards. Okay, at least I didn't steal any of my things. Both of mine, I know this comes back when it's destroyed. Um, or banished. I didn't know this. Only during the main phase, though. Okay, so if it gets attacked by battle, it's no, no big deal. Oh, no. Not this fucker! I don't like birds! Except for Lyra Luce, they're alright, but those are girls in bird costumes, which are fundamentally different. All right. What you gonna get? Okay. End phase? Yes. A salt roller will roll into so much salt. Uh. So, is this another revolt? Revolt's still at three, right? Um. So, they've just got another sure egg just on, waiting on board. Um. Let's go ahead and bring back the Scale Bomber. That'll give this more attack. Let's... Pokey Goal. What does this thing do? Cannot be used. Your monster cannot target this card or Winged Beast. Okay. I'm not going to target. I'm just going to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. 200! Don't forget it! This card would be destroyed. You can destroy one other. Okay, so I can still destroy it. That's the good thing. So let's go ahead and make another Pickle Felina just to get the Goki Pole into the graveyard and then use the Goki Pole effect. And I don't want to use that effect because I want to keep the Kaiju in my hand. Let's add this. That will summon it. That will destroy you. And then, how many insects do I got? Three? Okay, let's shuffle three of them back. Everything except for the Atlas. I might want to summon that back out of the graveyard with uh, formation. Hey, Sting the Poison can attack twice. Let's get him out here. Come on out, Sting the Poison. Let's show them what we're rocking with. <coughs> okay, uh, battle time. Uh, 46 into 12? That's a big... Uh, I guess I gotta hit this. Didn't know it was 2,000. So the one meta deck is the one I seem to be defeating rather easily. I don't understand this. Why did I have so much trouble with, like, Brave Token Exorcister? 
Well, I guess because it was, like, specifically designed... Not specifically designed, but... I do a lot of graveyard stuff. A lot of graveyard shenaniganery. Now, what he'd actually want to do here is summon Shureg and not use the effect. Because if you use the effect, I can blow you up with Scale Bomber. But if you do not, then, um... Then I just can't attack over your 3,000. And you done goofed. Oh, but they chain blocked it. Okay. They blocked my chain! What do you want to banish? The 4,000 attacker? <laughs> that. Um, oh no. Wait. During the main phase. Okay. Unfortunate. Um. All right. Let's see. What do I want to do here? No, I think Atlas is probably the best. One, two, three, four. And do I want to tribute over this? This doesn't do anything now that it's here. Just unfortunate that I put that in attack mode. Um, although, yeah, I could have another negate as opposed to another destruction. I think the negate would probably be better. So let's go ahead and tribute off this. Summon a bee trooper from the deck. Let's go for scout buggy. Little dune buggy in the sand. Little old dune buggy in my hand. Do a little blue dune buggy. Okay. Cicada King. King of cicadas. You just run over it, of course, but that basically costs them the battle phase. Forbidden Droplet. Unfortunato. That just does everything you want. Turns off mana gates. Although they didn't, they didn't get rid of Atlas for some reason. Seems like a missed opportunity. Yes, I will summon a token. There you go. I can tribute that token to get 5,000. I think I lost. I kind of feel bad for complaining now that I, I guess I wasn't complaining, but I was just like, you know, you're in the, you're in the casual room, right? And then he lost to a, a fairly casual deck. It is interesting that the best duel I've had has been against the meta. I wonder if B troopers maybe have some kind of like anti meta flavor to them. Maybe that's why they're rogue tier. Like they're better against the established decks, but not so much against rogue shit. That could be entirely possible. I don't know. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed that one. And we've got one more final duel, so let's just get the fuck into it. I said the F word. <laughs> A calm ellipses guides us into the tenth duel. This is so weird. I probably should have mentioned I got this new, like, setup and everything. It's much more green. It's much more clear. I'm, like, standing out against it. Hard make Shadal fusion. All right. Fortunately, I've got this, so I can stop the window. But yeah, as a result of this, I've had to change the way the camera is, like, located. I'm used to, before, I would go all this way. But now this way is off camera. Now I'm facing you, like, more straight on, and I'm watching over here, which is where the monitor is. Uh, we need to save this for the window. This can't be destroyed, so I can't just, like, run Goki Pole into it. I don't know why I keep thinking I have to run Goki Pole into it. I have to be able to do other stuff. So, Shadal, Zombie, Dogmatica. Okay, and what are you sending? Is it Ballardrock? Are we sending Ballardrock to the graveyard? Do you have a field spell? No, but if you activate the field spell, I no longer have insects, so that's that's just game. I cannot summon this because I don't control insects. 
And there's my one thing that might have gotten me out of this anyway. Uh, yep. That's why you play the spell trap removal. Just to worry about that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I could run that. Do. Trying to think if there's any other way. Wait, I might have a way to do this. Okay. So we go key pull. Oh, I forgot to activate this. I was so busy worried about the, the, the zombie world. Oh, I'm so dumb. Yeah, that's my one special summon. Um, uh, I can't do this anyway. I have to crash it, otherwise I won't be able to do anything. So yeah, we'll just go into battle. We'll crash into the Unizombie. Activate the effect. Get the, um... Assault Roller to my hand. Oh, but that doesn't work. Because I needed the Almirage so that I could use both of those to make the... Yeah, that would have been the play, was if I had remembered to, in permanence, could have made Almirage, done this, then summoned this... Oh wait, no, I can't. I can't even summon this. I don't know what... It's banish an insect from your graveyard. And I don't have insects in my graveyard. I have zombies in my graveyard. Yup. Floodgates. Well, we lose this one, but uh, I'm not sure we'd have much chance either way. <laughs> so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. B Trooper Beatdown only went 5-5, five and five, which is not too bad, but it's, it's worse than I've done in a while, which is surprising for this build. A lot of people were praising the B Troopers. I was praising B Troopers. They've got a lot of neat stuff they can do, a lot of strong plays. Their ability to play through disruption is usually pretty good. But I don't know if it's my build, or just the hands I got, or the opponents we faced, but I just wasn't able to make it work as much as I'd like to. Hopefully you at least got an idea of how the deck is supposed to work though. We did have a couple interesting back and forth duels where we got to see some stuff, especially that one against the Tri-Brigade player. That, that one would, went pretty well, I would say. Regardless, thanks again to Cat Monarch for suggesting this. Thanks to all the patrons. Their names will be read off at the end. I'm not sure how many people stay to the end, but I got a whole end screen thing. There's like a secret question. You should check it out. Uh, next time, not sure what I'll be working on. I have another Patreon request, but they have not gotten back to me yet. So we will see. And until then, good luck and have fun. Buenos dias, my bemused buddies, and welcome to the outer bounds of the video. This is where I take a moment to be nice and thank all the patrons who made this show possible, especially the $25 and higher patrons who help me beat poverty and be successful. Their names are Davon Crushin, Tiberius Kane Moriarty, Yellow, Cat Monarch, Yami, Zero1503, Austin Glover, Chris W, Death's Dancer, Montry, Chris Kessler, Dancing Joker, Diotic, Matt, Muffin Fiend, Nathan, Nerozard22, Nightfang, Penumbra Eterna, Kirvin, Quintingent, and Trevor F. If you'd like to join the big bad Beetleborgs who brazenly bond their bills to my band of brothers, the Patreon link is on the screen and listed down in the description. There's a bunch of rewards and you can join for as little as a dollar a month, so take a moment to check it out. This episode's secret question of the day is, do you like jazz? Let me know down in the comments and until next time, stay frosty, Legos.